of a system like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody remember if I actually showed up uh, some some face portraits of gradient fields? I think we did. Yeah, you did. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the character? What's the s um, feature? The main feature of this of this type of systems is that you have a function v of v of x. So that's a function, let's say, defined on the whole R two, or you know, it could be R three or R four. But just to visualize R2, so you have the contour plot, the, the level curves where V is constant, right? They're plotted, let's say this, these are the level curves. And then the solution to this differential system is actually uh, the solution curves are intersecting those level curves at 90 degrees, so they're perpendicular to the level curves. Uh, just as you know, the gradient of a, of a function is a vector that's perpendicular to the, to the level curves of that function. And the choice of minus sign here is just so that it's um, the solutions are moving as time evolves, as time increases, they're moving in the direction of decrease. Right? So opposite to the gradient. You want, so you want to make sort of think of V as being, um, well, if V were a, were a function that's kind of quadratic, right? So it's, it has a minimum at one point. Okay? You'd like to uh, characterize or to write a direction field that is a, a dynamical system that goes towards the minimum, right? So you want to go in a decreasing fashion, right? So you don't want um, to to go away from that equilibrium. So that's why you put this minus. If you didn't have the minus, then what would happen? All the direction fields will, will point opposite, right? And you would go actually, instead of going as t goes to infinity towards the, the minimum, you would go as t goes to negative infinity. So you would go in the opposite direction, okay? But of course, you can V here doesn't have to be like a one that has a minimum. It could be something that has a maximum. Right? So, so that's why it's just sort of a convention. Um, and now I discover things that I shouldn't have said. I said the function V is a diaphanol function for the system. No, okay. No, that's true. That's correct. Okay, so why is that? Why is it true? Well, what is it? What is uh, what do we call a Lyapunov function? I don't know if you noticed. The book is a little bit conf um, confused about that definition. What is a Lyapunov function? Such that all of x prime are decreasing. The, that function is decreasing along solution. It's not increasing along solution. Right? That's my definition of Lyapunov function. Um, and so I don't requ we don't require that v has a minimum, right? Now, if v has a minimum and is a Lyapunov function is, is not increasing along solutions, then that min minimum is a stable or asymptotically stable. So that extra requirement is used in uh, stability, okay? So here we're not asking stability. We're just saying, you know, if, if the system looks like this, then V is decreasing, is not increasing a lot of solutions. And that's easy to check by the chain rule. Um, simply take the derivative. Like the directional derivative of V Right in the direction of the direction field. That's what it is. You dot, you you dot. You know, you, you take the grad of v, dot it with the direction of where x is at that, where x is heading at that time, x prime of t. Since x prime is negative gradient, 
you know, you have grad dot negative gradient, that's negative length of the gradient squared. So that's less than or equal than zero. Okay? So no matter no matter how V looks, you know, it, it could be it could be some sort of um, function that has um, a saddle point at zero. You know, let's let's just let's just visualize something like that. Um, so let's say I have a, a function that has a saddle point. So I say is x squared plus y cubed. I don't know over. So it looks simpler. Um, and that's that's actually too simple, right? Plus um, x y. So what would be the the gradient system corresponding to this? So it's partial view with respect to x, partial view with respect to y. Um, x prime equals minus x prime y prime equals minus partial view with respect to y. So this is minus two x uh, x. Excuse me, just x plus y, and this is minus. Um, y squared plus x. Okay. So zero zero is clearly an an equilibrium. But there are other equilibrium, right? So let's um, let's plot this. Minus x minus y minus x squared minus minus x minus y squared, I believe. Okay, so the um, zero zero is an equilibrium. Okay, and I believe there is another equilibrium at negative one, one, or something like that. Okay. So let's change that from negative two to two, negative two to two, so it looks more square. Okay, so now let's look at the solutions. Face portrait, so um, clearly there's no um, well, this is not a stable equilibrium, right? It's not. It's not a sink. It's a saddle. Uh, how about the other one? The other one looks like it is asymptotically stable, right? So probably at that point there is a minimum. Although, well, let's see at the. Um, let's plot the level curve. So let's plot the v. So v we said was what x squared over two plus y cubed over 3 plus x times y? No. Is that no? Okay. okay, so we don't like that. Um, let's pick the values. Oops. So it looks like we need some smaller values. Okay, so we want uh, we want some negative and some positive. So we need negative 0.5, 0, 0.5, 1. Let's try that. 
Okay. So it's kind of a complicated picture here, but you can see the So, for instance, look at this. Look, look at the, um, um, the level curve corresponding to the value zero. So, where is the function equal to zero? It's actually kind of a curve that self-intersects, right? And that's just because you know. I think just because x squared and y cubed appear, right? Um, this even has a name. Anybody? Okay. It's called folium of Descartes or something. Anyway, but it has this shape. Um, so what's it's not clear. This is a maximum or a minimum, local max or local minimum. What do you think? I think it's. Solutions go toward it, so V is decreasing along solutions. So that has to be a minimum, right? So it has to have the negative values uh, at negative 1, 1. And what are those values? OK, it's like 1 half. OK, so it's a smaller value, but it's not, it's not, you cannot see it over there, right? But you have a local minimum, right? You have a saddle. And uh, you also have a minimum values here, right? So things are f going downhill here. Okay. So it's kind of if you are look the, the message here is that if you look at the at the face portrait of your system, okay, it's not always possible to recognize it being a gradient system. You know. You really have to know if there is such a function, a potential function v, to start with, so that um, the right hand sides of that differential system are the partials with respect to x and y, respectively. Okay? If you know that, then you can kind of verify that all of these are right angles, of course, if you, if you uh, plot it at the right scale, x versus y. Um, and then, as you said, it's it's also, you know, that along solutions, you know, V is decreasing, so, um, so you kind of see what are the, 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 the highs and lows of, of this, right? So clearly this, this is not a low point, this is not a minimum, because this, on this direction it's kind of above, right? It's above, then it's below, right? But still, I would, I call this a, the upper function, because it's, it has that, that very important property of non-increasing along solutions. Um, what's more, so it's non-decreasing along solutions, right? But it turns out that you can um, say even more. You can actually say if, if, if they are um, asymptotically stable or just stable. Okay. So, um, Let's say the next thing I do is I basically we we say that the equilibrium points are um, well the points for which the right hand side is zero, so it's basically the points where the gradient of the of the potential function is 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 zero as a vector, right? And we call those points critical points for a function, right? A function of two variables, for instance. Uh, when you look for max minimum, first thing you do you set the gradient equal to zero, right? And you call those to be the great critical points of that function. And then, of course, you do some more like second derivative test to figure out if you have a max or a minimum. Okay? Yeah, so I think the example was on this one. So let me skip that. Um, but anyway, you find the equilibrium the same way. And Basically, um, this is the statement that you have <coughs> uh, perpendicular level curves to the gradient. Okay, and this is actually the one that that's most 
uh, relevant. is that if you have a minimum and it's isolated so there are no well I should say a strict minimum if you have a strict minimum then the conclusion is that that, that minimum is a asymptotically stable equilibrium for the gradient system okay. so every minimum like this is an asymptotically stable uh, similarly um, Every local maximum that's isolated is going to be asymptotic. Well, it's going to be unstable, right? Or as t goes to negative infinity, you'd have a asymptotically stable. But we don't talk about t. Go I mean, uh, stability. We don't talk about stability as t goes to negative infinity. So, can somebody tell me why we we can draw that conclusion? Asymptotic stability. Now that we know uh, Lyapunov function, I said it in my lecture. Yeah. Well, how do you know it goes as t goes to infinity to that point, and not maybe wondering? I don't know, getting to a periodic orbit around that equilibrium. Hmm? Isn't that definition right, right. But we're trying to show that it's. We tr so we know we know that this we know the solutions go uh, so so that v is decreasing along the solutions. We also, if in addition we know that this is a minimum and it's and it's local, it's it's isolated. So there is no other minimum around it in a neighborhood. We have to conclude that it's actually going to stick until it goes to infinity at that point. And no, as I said, no spiral. No spiral, you know, maybe. How do we know that? Okay. So. Well, they're not real circles, right? Not necessarily. It could be one of those cases when it's. Could it be one of those cases when it's kind of elongated? In Not in this example. No. Yeah, in this example, okay, you could say it's going. It's. It's like concentric circles, right? And I don't know. You have. Well, the point is that you can make. You can make this very precise based on. The Apunov method. What was the connection between Lyapunov function and asymptotic stability? Strictly less than zero. Okay, if it's strictly less than zero, then by the Lyapunov stability theorem, which we actually proved and it was messy, right? Um, we know that it's, it's going as t goes to infinity to the origin and okay so I guess I guess I didn't write it but I, I think I said it um, right everybody remembers that Lyapunov um, so this was like v dot which was the derivative of v Along solutions, well, yeah, along solutions or along phi t of x naught at t equals zero. If this is um, strictly less than zero for all x star different than than the equilibrium in a neighborhood of the equilibrium, so that implied by the Lyapunov st stability part two, I guess. Part one was just talking about stability, right? But this is asymptotic stability. That that's the limit. So the omega limit set is just a point. Yeah. So could you 
you drawn your curve with a flat spot there, it would have just been stable. If V were flat, constant for on a neighborhood, um, then the gradient of V were zero. So you'd have equilibria in the whole neighborhood. So it wouldn't be an isolated neighbor uh, equilibrium. It would be periodic. No, no, no. You would have, so so for gradient systems, in fact, that's that's the next thing is there are no um, periodic solutions. Let's see, can we prove that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's 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 coming right right next. But I think I think we can. That you don't have periodic solutions for gradient systems. Well, what we were trying to prove there, I think you did a page down after that, because I think something about the omega linear point is about where I can prove. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. That's. Exactly, yeah. So we talk about for a gradient system that the only, if you have a solution that's, uh, well, if it's an equilibrium, it's an equilibrium. But if it's not an equilibrium, the omega limit set is always an equilibrium. Consists of just one equilibrium, okay? So implicitly what we're saying here is that there is no periodic, well, that, that the omega limit set cannot be a periodic solution. Okay, but let me ask you, so independent of this question on the exam, um, show, okay, sample question on the exam, um, is show that uh, for a gradient system, There are no non constant periodic solutions orbits. I mean, intuitively, you, you know, how can you have a periodic solution that is orthogonal, perpendicular to level curves, right? Of a function. Well, I want to go beyond the. Inti in intuition here. So how do we show this? Hmm? It always goes goes back to the Right, so in another way is saying that if you, if you have a periodic solution, you cannot have this perpendicular to the level curves of a, of a single function. Okay, but how do you prove it? Other than by picture. And of course not in 2D, but in, in, in many dimensions. Well, well, again... You can do it by concentration by saying that, that you have a function that has a periodic solution. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you take the derivative of the periodic solution and dot it with the gradient to prove that it's not zero. Pretty much, exactly. So, so let's assume there is a periodic orbit, and let's assume that for this gradient system, right? So take take the just just take the the uh, derivative of v along that solution, right? And you we we know that this is minus grad v. Square, right? V of x of t, excuse me. Okay, do we know that? We don't have to recompute it. I mean, that's that was a computation that showed that v is, is actually up no function. 
Now, this function v along a periodic solution has to start start somewhere and then ends up with the same value eventually, right? So, how can it be decreasing? And um, how can it be decreasing and start at a value and, 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 I don't know, five seconds later is at the same value? It has to be constant, right? So, uh, if, if x of t were periodic, let's say x of t plus capital T is x of t. Then, this implies that V of x of t plus capital T, no, well, it's, yeah, is V of t, V of x of t, I don't know, for some t, t naught, right? V non-increasing, this two imply that V is constant. I mean, not V, but V on this solution is constant. Does it make sense for everybody? It has to be constant. It cannot be... Well, if it's constant, the derivative is zero, right? Well, it means the gradient at each point on this is zero, right? But how, how is that a contradiction? Why is this a contradiction? Can you have a periodic solution on which what does this imply? The gradient of v is zero on up, on each point of the of the solution. It would exactly mean that this implies that each point on the solution is in equilibrium. Exactly, right? Because this is x prime is, is minus grad of, of v, right? So this means this means x well that's exactly it means that each point x of t were an equilibrium. But he, but we, we, we assume that, it, I mean, we said that it is, is a periodic solution that's not, well, it's not constant, so it cannot be, so this is contradiction. We're non-constant. Okay? So you cannot have a periodic non-constant solution to a gradient system. Okay. Now, to get... So, that also kind of uh, double uh, just justifies or double confirms what we said. If I have an isolated minimum, then it, it's asymptotically stable, right? Because there's no other way for the omega limit set, right? It cannot be, it has to stay within each level curve, right? And it doesn't have any way to go, like, go around the periodic solution. It has to go straight into the equilibrium point. But furthermore, it cannot happen in a spiraling in fashion. It has to go like, straight, straight in, right? So that, that was the other thing that I had mentioned here is that you cannot have gradient system or equilibrium for which the solutions are actually spiraling in. The reason is, you look at the linearization, 
around an equilibrium, an isolated equilibrium for a gradient system. And what do you see? Well, so it's, it's true in, in any number of uh, dimensions. But see, when you take the linearization of that, what do you get? How do you delinearize a system? You basically take the right-hand sides, differentiate them partially with respect to each variable. So at the end of the day, you get basically second partial derivatives of this one function v with respect to all mixed, all all uh, pairs of of, uh, of variables. Okay, and you get basically the system linearized system, right? And you look at the eigenvalues, right? To, to have a spiraling in scenario, you, you need to have what kind of eigenvalues? Complex parts, right? With imaginary parts. Well, for symmetric metrics, what happens is this is not possible. Okay? So symmetric metrics has always all the eigenvalues real. Where do you learn that? In mechanics, I'm sure you do that because you have lots of tensors and uh, elasticities. But um, so, how many of you don't know this? It's okay not to know, but. So, if you have a matrix, a, a symmetric matrix, a real symmetric matrix, then the, all the eigenvalues are automatically real. Um, it's actually a fairly simple proof, but it requires some complex um, complex numbers. So I don't know if I should give you that proof, but um, you, you've seen it in a linear algebra course if you took. You've probably seen it also in a PD course if you took a PD course. Okay, so there's no, there's no possibility of spiraling in. Okay, um, and of course one one additional statement that we actually uh, can prove fairly easy is this: is that if you have an, a point in the omega limit set of a solution, that point is an equilibrium. Okay. Um, the proof of this is really based on that same kind of tricky analysis that we did for um, for the um, well, for the of stability and also for the um, what was called a Sal invariance principle. Has anybody looked at this? Proof or? Sort of same idea as if you have if you have an omega, omega limits point, so you have that point is visited infinitely close by by, sol by the solution, right? And v is decreasing along the solution. Then some, somehow you you can make the argument um, that if you that that point has a, has to be a critical point, okay? that you cannot have uh, to be non-critical because then it, you take a solution starting at that omega limit point and you would, you would end up less than V of Z. Okay? And that cannot happen because when you have these two conditions. Okay. So uh, let, let's, <clears throat> let's go back to this. Um, is this an omega limit? Point. Well, we know that they, they have to be equilibrium, right? So you, 
It's only the two. So, so for what kind of solutions is this an omega limit point where omega, omega limit is set? Is this omega limit point for any of this, any solution? I think just for very one solution or two solutions, one that would go straight in that, but it's just for one, right? And for the other one that goes, how do we call these curves again? Stable curves, right? So, so even if you have a saddle point, you still have, you know, very few solutions that actually tend to that. Okay. Of course, if you are in seven dimensions, depending on the stable, uh, the dimension of the stable and unstable manifolds, right? You you may have more, but in this case, it's just a curve because it's one dimensional. For everything else, uh, like. Like a curve, this curve, this solution curve, does it have an omega limit set? No, right? But that doesn't contradict that statement. We said if there is an omega limit set, then that has to be just one equilibrium. So there are these kind of signature properties of this gradient system that, that one should sort of remember because, you know, uh, they're very special. Um, and the last thing is how do you recognize a system that's that is gradient, that whether it is gradient or not. So I gave you an example there, and it's kind of it's fairly easy, but it could be trick, uh, could be a little bit tricky though. Um, so let me give another example. Uh, determine whether um, the system x prime equals and y prime equals. Well, you had one in the homework, didn't you? Which I guess I. Well, I said that you can actually turn in the homework Wednesday um, if you need extra time. So let me let me not do this one, but let me take a linear system. Let's see what some linear systems are actually gradient systems. or not? How do you recognize whether they are or not? Hmm? Right, but you don't have to memorize any of that. You just have, does there exist V such that partial of u with respect to x is f minus f, right? Minus partial, and minus partial of u with respect to y is g. That's all that it, you know, amounts to, right? So, I mean, the minus is just annoying, but, um, all right. So when do, we, uh, when do we know that such a function exists, and when do we know it doesn't exist? Well, if, if, if such a function were to exist, then um, the mixed partial derivatives of v, the second partial derivatives of, of v, should actually would, would match, right? If v exists, then second partial of, well, then partial of f with respect to y is minus second partial of x, v with respect to x and y, which is same as minus second partial of with respect to y and x, it's minus this partial of g with respect to x, right?
So if these two, if these two are actually um, equal, then there is a function. Well, hold on. No, if such, if there is a function v, then this must be satisfied, right? Is the op is the converse true? So, so let, first of all, let's see in our example. Is that is that satisfied? So what? So. Okay, so in our case, the answer is simple: is not a gradient system. Um, I mean, you don't have to plot it to to convince yourself, but let me just. See, when you plot, when you see the direction field or the face portrait, you should see something that's kind of not not compatible with um, with some with not being gradient. But you may not see. You know, that's the point. You cannot. You know, you don't have a list of things to check to say well. Um, and if they're all checked, then you have a, you have a, a vector field, a, a gradient field, gradient uh, system. Um, right? At first sight, you could imagine that there is a function that is kind of decreasing in this direction, right? And then decreasing furthermore along those directions. Right? So, you can actually make up a, a Lyapunov function for this system. Probably, but still, having a Lyapunov function is not does not make it a gradient gradient system. Gradient system is very special, right? It has to be exactly partials uh, with respect to uh, the right variables. Okay? But again, I think you can make up a probably you can make up a um, Lyapunov function. How do you make up a Lyapunov function? Hmm? You see, it's a linear system, right? So you have eigenvalues and eigendirections, right? You have the one eigendirection is this x-axis, and the other eigendirection is, I don't know, is that? You remember if you if you if you di if you diagonalize that if you write in canonical form, right? You have two distinct eigendirections, so you're going to be able to diagonalize it, right? Diagonalizing is actually going to show you the eigenvalues are one and negative one, right? So if you kind of straighten out this this system, if you linearize around the origin, it's going to be exactly. This one, right? Now give me a Lyapunov function for this system. X 
I think it's x squared minus y squared or y squared minus x squared. Right, because it has to be, it has to be decreasing in this direction and has to be incre uh, No, excuse me. It has to be yeah, increasing in this direction and decreasing in this direction. So as x increases, it should be decreasing. So it's minus x squared plus y squared. Right. So still, one can write find. A Lyapunov function. Um, v of x, y is. Did I say minus x squared plus y squared? Mm -hmm. But notice that I have to. I straighten the I straighten the the system, right? So so this would be for the straightened system. Then I have to go back to the original variables. It probably works for both, so we can we can just yeah ah ah it's not v. I don't want to call it v, right? So there is a Lyapunov function, even though it's not a gradient system, right? Now, of course, this has no it, zero is not a minimum for this, so you don't have stability, right? So this Lyapunov function is not really useful because it doesn't tell you anything about stability. But um, sometimes I use y, sometimes. OK. Um, OK, so anyway, so that's uh, coming back, though, to this. Um, when is a linear system x prime equals ax uh, gradient so let's let's say two by two so a is a b c d right so there, there must be some things happening. So x prime equals ax plus by, y prime equals cx plus dy. And you must have the partial derivative of the first one with respect to y equal to the partial derivative of the second one with respect to x, right? So partial of f with respect to y equals partial of g with respect to x implies b equals c. So what kind of systems is this? What kind of metrics is this? Hmm? It's metric, right? So only if the system is symmetric, or oh, the metrics, the coefficient matrix is symmetric, that you that you have. Well, and if it is symmetric, how do we recover the, the potential function? How do we find a function v whose partial with respect to x is that and partial with respect to y is the other one? Just integration, right? So it would be partial v with respect to x with a minus is ax plus b y, so it means v with a minus is ax squared over 2 plus bxy, right? plus some constant, which may depend on y. Okay. And partial with respect to y with a minus is b, uh, c, is, c is the same as b, so b x plus dy. So v, oops, so how do we use this? Well, we use this to compute this constant, right? So. The easiest is to differentiate this v with respect to y. It's going to be bx plus c prime. It has to equal bx plus dy. So, so c of y, c prime is dy, so c of y is dy squared over 2. So, 
in the end you get v of x is minus a x squared over 2 plus b x y plus d y over 2 okay so so that's the condition for those uh, for for that system to be gradient now what if you had more than two variables if you have a system with three equations with three unknowns see I think this 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 thing you you should have seen in calculus three I think um, when you talk about line integrals and um, or line integrals of vector fields. Remember what we do? You, anybody remember this? F P Q. Anybody remember this beast? What was that? Hmm? That's a line integral, right? It has to be integrated over a line, right? Uh, over a curve in the x y plane, right? And this is uh, this. So this is the line integral, right? Along some curve of a vector field, right? P and Q. So if you have a line C and you have some vectors along that line, right? And they have components P and Q, then this is the quantity, um, the, well, integrating this vector field along this curve is represented by that. And what's the meaning of it? It will be like a work done by this force along this, along this curve, right? So there was something special about, and of course there was, um, if C is a closed curve, It goes like this, then there was something about um, when the, the line or the loop, the line integral over a closed curve is zero or not. So when was it zero? if this vector field, which was P and Q, was conservative. What does it mean conservative? It means it came from a gradient of a potential function, right? What was the test for being conservative? That is, what was the test for a vector field, just like our right-hand sides, right? To be coming from the gradient of a function. Where a necessary condition was exactly was coming from the Green's theorem, right? Green's theorem was saying um, if this was a closed curve, simple closed curve that in, in, enclosed a, cer a certain domain, and this was dp dy minus dq dx, or actually I think it was the other the other way around. Of course, you had to do with orientation, you have to deal with orientation. Okay? So, if dq dx equals dp dy, in our case, little f and little g, right? That was little g and this was little f. 
So if those are equal, then what, what was the conclusion? Or let's, let's go backwards. If f was conservative vector field, so it came from a gradient, so gradient vector field, right? Then this, then this have to equal, right? Because mixed partial derivatives have to, second partial derivative has to be equal. Conversely, if these are equal, can we conclude that f is conservative? Now we need one more ingredient. What was the additional ingredient? Was actually that the the two the vector field is defined on a simply connected region. Then the conclusion was uh, yes, it is conservative. But something that's mainly overlooked. But so what, what is that? What is a simply connected domain? A domain that doesn't have a hole in it, right? In two D, in three D, it's a different story. But um, so, in other words, you cannot have any holes in the domain, right? What's the, what's another way of saying is that if you take a any loop, any closed loop, you can kind of shrink it to a point without leaving the region. Right? So any loop can be shrunk continuously to a point. So you can see in the plane if I have if I take one point out of the plane, so in other words if the fun if the right hand sides are defined except at one point in the plane then I don't have a simply connected domain, right? Take one point in the other plane, just put a, I don't know, take your necklace and, and put a, uh, um, I don't have a necklace, uh, <laughs> um, right? And, and put a, like a, a pin and uh, a pencil in the middle. You won't be able to shrink that, right, without leaving the domain. So that's what it means to be simply connected. Um, so every there's so for example this is simply connected right this one is not simply connected I mean these are kind of very subtle things but hey you should <laughs> they should have been done in calculus three. Um, the, the message is that you cannot, uh, I mean, you, you cannot conclude, you know, without going through this analysis, that a direction, f that, that a right hand sides of your system are um, conservative or not. Okay? Um, let me see if I can give an example. Um, So where the derivative with respect to one, uh, with respect to y, of 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 the right hand side here in x, matches the derivative with respect to x of that, but they're not defined say at the origin. And there's a typical example if, if I remember correctly. Let's see why. I 
mm. that's the example, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, there is a, there is an example where you have. Do you see that the partial with respect to y of the first one is the same as the partial with respect to x of the second one? Because the symmetry is just replace x with y. So just just that should not uh, uh, imply that this system is, is, is conservative, that this system is gradient system. All right? Why? Because this, these functions are not defined at at zero, right? Defined on the plane minus the point zero, zero, which is not simply connected. Okay? How do you show that this guy is not conservative? So this is this is the beauty of Calc three, right? That's what you have done probably the last lecture of Calc three, if at all. It's actually the main is part of main of the. <laughs> now the reality in Calc three, many many times you don't even, you know, get to this. How do you show that there is no system that actually has? Uh, excuse me, but there is no function v whose derivatives are this. system is not conservative. Curl... Uh, well, let's see, curl... You have to have a third variable, right? Curl is... for, for a vector of two, two components, Green's theorem, yeah, Green's theorem, yeah. So, right, so, but hold on, hold on a second, I mean, according to Green's theorem, this this line integral over a closed loop, right, equals the integral of the, the double, of the uh, uh, double integral of the, uh, you know, the uh, curl, right? But the curl is zero. That's the point. The curl is zero because partial with respect to y of this is the same as partial with respect to f of x of that. Okay. The problem is you have to avoid zero, so you have to avoid zero. So you need to show that this actually is not zero for a closed curve that surrounds the, the origin. So that's how you show it's not conservative, right? Because if it were conservative, then um, the line integral is path independent. Okay, so it goes into all of that. Path independent means you start, like if, if I take the path from here to here, I mean, sorry, if I take two points from here to here, right? And, and F were conservative, then the line integral over this path would be the same as the line integral over this path and would equal the difference of the potential, okay? So if you find a curve on which the line integral is not path independent, in this case, closed curve for which the line integral is not zero, then you would be done, okay? 
And now I kind of have doubts that this is a good example. But the point is that there are, there are situations like this. So you cannot uh, assume that's the case. Let's, let me just, yeah, that's not a good example. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll have to kind of uh, there, there's a version of this that I don't know uh, on top of my head right now. Okay. Anyway, th th this is just you have to keep that in mind that that um, that condition is not really sufficient. So this this condition is not sufficient. It requires this additional analysis. Um, when we are, when we were up here, for instance, we said it's a linear system. Why do we not? I mean, what's the that extra analysis? What's that extra uh, thing that we need to check? Is that are those two functions defined on a simply connected domain? Sure, right? Because it's defined everywhere. So the, the whole plane is simply connected. So this really is sufficient. It, it means that there is a, a potential function. Okay. So uh, let me let me. I'll, I'll come back on this um, and, and give you the exact uh, example, kind of classical example. But let me just say one minute about Hamiltonian systems. For Hamiltonian systems. There's also a version in in two in uh, in multi dimensions, but it has to be even dimensions. So let, let's we're just gonna focus on two dimensions, uh, where I have x and y, and it may seem like this is a play of you know playing with partial derivatives, but um, Hamiltonian system is a class of systems where you have a function h that when you differentiate respect to y appears in the right hand side of x prime and derivative with respect to x with a minus <coughs> appears in the right hand side of y prime. Okay. How do you recognize this to be uh, when a system is Hamiltonian? It's very similar, right? Except if I give you this, then you have f to be partial of h with respect to y, g minus partial of h with respect to x. So you see partial of f with respect to x has to equal minus partial of partial of g with respect to y, so partial of f with respect to x plus partial of g with respect to y has to equal zero. Again, question is, this is necessary, right? So if your system doesn't satisfy this, it's not Hamiltonian. But if, there, if the system satisfies this, then the question is, do I have a Hamiltonian? And is the same thing uh, the, system, the domain has to be simply connected. Okay. What's the main property of Hamiltonian systems? H along solutions is constant. Okay, so that's very different from um, gradient systems, right? Gradient systems, the whatever the function was v was actually decreasing unless it was going through an equilibrium. It's decreasing. Here the, always the solutions stay on the level curves of h. So the picture is quite different. If I have, let's say a Hamiltonian is some sort of a function with a minimum, right? So the level curves are, I mean that's not always no, the case. But if if this is the case, then what do we know about solutions in the plane I'm talking here? 
starting, if they start at a point on this level curve, they're always going to stay on that level curve, right? So it's always going to be um, depending on how the level curve looks like, right? Now, there, there are situations, and, and I think I have an example, probably we, did I talk about this? No, I didn't talk about this example, but anyway, so there's an example in, um, even in the book that has minus x minus x cubed, where um, you, you test, you know, whether that is a Hamiltonian system, you end up that it is, then you find the Hamiltonian, right? And then you, you look at the direction, you, look at, you basically look at the level curves of this function, right? And what you'll end up uh, having is um, well, it's not very easy to figure out what the level curves of that are, uh, but I think 0, 0 Actually, plus or minus one and zero are equilibrium, and also zero zero. Okay, but so let's just look at let's just imagine this is what's happening. Okay, let's say this is the right when you, when you plot that function is a fourth order, so it has some double well. So let's imagine this is one of the level curves, right? This is zero, okay? And I don't know, this is one and zero, negative one, zero. So let's imagine this is gonna be another level curve, okay? And then another level curve and so forth. So maybe, what can you say about the solutions? Well, the solution that starts on a level curve that has no equilibrium is going to do what? It's going to keep going, never actually stop. There's going to have no omega limit point, right? Because if there's an omega limit point, there has to be an equilibrium. Okay, we have to talk about that, uh, prove that, I guess. But now, let's see if we start when the omega limit set where there is an equilibrium like this one, then, and that's not right, this shouldn't be here, probably that's going to be like that. I'm sorry, the picture is not too good, but if I start on a point where there is an omega, uh, there, is a, there is an equilibrium on that level curve, then what's going to happen? Or actually two, if there are two, then what's going to happen is you're going to have um, approaching one of the equilibrium, right? As t goes to infinity, and as t goes to negative infinity, is approaches the other one. So that's called hetero clinic, right? And if there is an equilibrium, only one equilibrium, then it's gonna anywhere you start on this level curve is gonna go towards that equilibrium at plus infinity as well as at minus infinity. That would be a homoclinic or okay. So you see, for Hamiltonian systems. Knowing the Hamiltonian really um, ends the, I mean, gives you the solution of the system. Of course, it's tricky to find the Hamiltonian, um, and especially when you have more than two variables. But, um, yeah, and if you have more than two variables, knowing that the, Hamilt the, the Hamiltonian is conserved may not be actually the end of the story because. Um, in R4, like when you have four variables, what's, what are the level surfaces? They're actually three-dimensional. When you say H equals three, right, and you're in R4, it has four variables, then it's gonna have, it's gonna be a surface of dimension three, okay? So all it's saying is the solution stays on that surface, but it doesn't tell you more, whereas in 
for systems of two equations, always the level curves are curves, so it's it's one dimensional, so you only have one direction to go to. Okay? Anyway, so um, homework is you know, do you know later than Wednesday? Um, I don't have the exams on Wednesday.